we have television. Do you want to be famous? No, I don't give a shit about being famous. I care about actually doing something that matters for the future. Mmm. <sighs> Cappuccino and me not caring. I've got a cappuccino and I'm wearing the holy cardigan of ZFG. TV, casting agents, getting a TV show, being on TV. All of the time they want to waste of yours and everybody else because they think you're a stupid monkey that will dance for a carrot and do dumb crap like Honey Boo Boo, clinging to the days of reality television, which is what in fact destroyed TV. Idiots to do stuff for nothing. And then the internet's like, screw you TV, we're done with you now. But in all seriousness, I have had quite a bit of experience of production companies, networks, casting agents. Over the last decade plus, either they're creating a show and they're wanting to cast for it, they learned about me and what I want to do and create a TV show. They want to put something together with a bunch of people. I mean, just across the board. It is flattering in a way. You know, it's nice to have people approach you and theoretically want to do something with you. I mean, that's how the world goes around. That's how you get anywhere in life. It frankly sucks to just be a goofball dancing in a fishbowl. And as a medium, I still do like television. I like film and movies um, and acting, whether that is on camera or on stage with live theater. I think the art of all that is really cool and certainly love to be part of it and do it in the future. Today's video kind of wanted to tongue in cheek and talk about just the absurdity of you know casting agents and production companies uh, because it might help some of you when you get approached. Avoided wasting a lot of time in my life and money on. We have television, do you want to be famous? No, I don't give a shit about being famous. I care about actually doing something that matters for the future and building something that's of value to more people than just my Myself, you should probably realize that and if we're gonna make a show let's do it and if we're not go away and stop wasting my time mm. <sighs> cappuccino and me not caring so the first time I got approached in a, in a large way was way back in the day before genius garage when I had push racing which was the shop I had to do restoration of high-end race vehicles or race prep or build cars customs that sort of thing we had a little bit of a presence maybe on Facebook and such not too much but that was back in the day of the turbine powered Batmobile that I built that actually here in the next week I think is going to be auctioned off on Barrett Jackson it is no longer mine. We got approached back then because obviously that was before YouTube really got huge presence. Uh, and when I had that go hugely viral back when I was being seen both in traditional media as well as online and going viral around the world, it got a lot of exposure and got a lot of exposure for my business and what we were doing there. And at the time had some uh, cool guys that worked there. Uh, and we had a lot of fun together, a lot of good jokes. Uh, and just a good vibe. There was a company, and I'm trying to remember how, what their name was. One of the dudes that I think was partnered in it was Carter Osterhouse. He's married to Amy Smart. He was like big on HDTV, had nice hair. Women liked him for that reason. Those people actually treated us really well. Uh, and they were kind. And we put enough effort in to film a sizzle reel, which is basically just a little commercial to pitch to networks or people who might put in money to a project. And it was really cool. It was a great, it was a great sizzle, obviously relating to cars, obviously relating to our sense of humor. And it didn't go anywhere. Not because they didn't try and didn't pitch it to, I think they pitched it to Discovery and History Channel, all that jazz. But the consensus was we like the guy as talent, but we don't really need that show at this time because they wanted to do, you know, just another one of those darn car rebuild restoration shows, which have become really trite and boring at this point. And TV has kind of ruined it for the car world because they're like, watch us totally rebuild this car in a week, <laughs> which is on a premise is idiotic. But the problem is for TV, they need things that are episodic. You either get into crap like Orange County Choppers where they're just yelling at each other or you have to restore something in every episode. Um, which is like, you know, American Restorations and such. Or you get into the very famous and theoretically successful uh, Pawn Star show. When you have different people coming on, you find out what it's worth and it comes and goes and they have the fun banner behind the scenes. And those are the kind of things that work well for TV and it's all about personality. But after doing that, I, you know, I'd realized that, you know, the networks liked myself as a character, potentially for host town or on camera town or whatever you call it. It seemed like every year of my life after that, we would get approached or I would get approached by another production company or casting agent. And I could probably find half a dozen of them still on my phone or whatnot. And every once in a while they circle back and they're like, what's going on in your world, man? What do you got going on? I'm like, dude, you have no idea all the stuff I've done in the last three years. So I tell them it never goes anywhere. In fact, 
It was like two days after my uh, daughter was born last year. So I was in the hospital and I ended up having a Skype conference meeting with uh, some casting people who I can't even remember who it is now, so I've forgotten all about them. But a number of them, serious, worthwhile production company, they were really into what I got going on and just the multifaceted, crazy, interesting aspects of my life and travel and all that. And they're like, what is your ideal show? And I said, my ideal show would be a, a travel adventure show that relates to history, where I go immersive into you know another place or culture or history, a bit of adventure relating to motor vehicles and going around. And I you know I told them examples of how we do it. It'd be really cool. It'd kind of be like Indiana Jones meets cars and motorcycles and airplanes. But they vanish. And of recent too, there's Hot Wheels was casting a show. I think it was going to be filmed in England. They wanted people that could come on and speak well and could talk about a, a car from their past or a dream car. And then they recreate it in a fun way and maybe make a Hot Wheels car. That was the premise. And this casting person gets with me. We do a Zoom call. And I'm like, yeah, of course. I, I can do X, Y, and Z. Like, it's, it's a perfect fit. That is to be said if they, <laughs> they haven't instantaneously filled their quota of white straight guys, because I'm gonna be honest, like nobody wants white straight guys on TV anymore. That's not a woe is me thing, that's a reality kind of thing. So it'd be a perfect fit, and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll fill out your stuff and get it to you later. But then I looked at everything they wanted me to do, to fill out, to send in, to be considered for the show, and I'm like, I don't have time for this. I literally don't have time to waste at a maybe so you can consider it. And I, I wrote her back nicely. I said, I gotta be honest, I don't have time for this on a maybe. You know who I am. I have a very clear past in history with everything I've done. Either I'm in the running or not, and you're gonna consider me. And I'll be happy to put in time if it's not, but I'm not gonna fill this out for nothing. And she was very nice. But then it was funny because within a week later, I had another casting person hit me up for the same TV show. And I'm like, Dude, I already know. I'm bringing these stories up because for any young people out there, or old people, it doesn't matter who is watching, if you're starting to get approached by casting people and production companies and whatnot, that's cool. You obviously are doing something interesting. I won't say right, I'll say interesting because TV likes to exploit people. But don't hold your breath. It's annoying because you have to humor them a little bit, but they will waste a heck of a, year, a lot of your time and it takes forever for it to go somewhere. And then for it to go somewhere where you actually are successful enough that it's been on for a season or two that maybe you can renegotiate to actually make some money for it to be worth your time is basically zero. The kind of people it seems like are on TV that come out of nowhere are people that are easily exploitable, that just wanna be famous and do something stupid to do that. Maybe they, or maybe they won't be successful. Or the people that are in a position in life where they just wanna be famous and have some fun and don't mind wasting their time potentially. I'm over it, like I'm kinda, I don't want to say I'm being a dick, but I'm being way more direct towards casting people and whatnot. And I'll tell you one last story. I think right before I got big on YouTube, it's like 2019, I think. It was through Instagram. A uh, guy hit me up, which is a uh, cinematographer, or videographer, or whatever, and they had a small, you know, film production company. And I've kind of tried to block these memories because it was just such a waste of time and so annoying. And the person saw everything I got going on with Instagram, and, he's, and the guy's like, okay, there's something here. And so we got to talking and relating to Genius Garage and all, and the dude straight came from California to Ohio for, it was at least three weeks. And my wife was and I were really nice. We let him stay with us just to be, you know, kind and a, you know, together effort. Brought a huge trailer, big gimbal uh, on, on a Mercedes, like hundred thousand plus dollars worth of camera equipment and, and lighting and all and set it up. And we just shot and filmed everything from the Batmobile we had to Genius Garage to driving cars on and everything and was super into it. So I ended up going out to California and they paid to fly me out there. They did all this on their own dollar. And they wanted to make a film for the film festivals, you know, like LA, Cannes, France, you know, New York, whatever. Because the deal is, I think to get in like the, the, what is it? The Screen Guild Union or something like that. You have to have so many awards or so many films that do something in international film festivals and so many people and then so many money going on. It's, it's the whole game to get into the circle basically. And they needed one last big thing and this is kind of going to be it. So we go through all that, film a lot of amazing stuff, go to California. They were going to have my wife come out to film some last things in California uh, with me and uh, being a car guy, driver, artist, teacher, all that jazz. And so I go out there, we have a nice time, and we're talking about it, and talk to some people, um, what do you call them, like executive producers? Those are the ones that basically get money for stuff. They were kind of weird, I'll be honest. They were like kind of kooky dukes out there, artists, California types, which I can vibe with, because I got a background in art. 
across the board. Occasionally it was a little kooky dukes, even for me. It got to, after when I went home, I'm like, you guys, like, we gotta figure this out. And they're like, then all of a sudden they started wanting contracts and stuff, and the contracts are garbage. It's like they found stuff off of nowhere. I'm like, guys, we need to start moving forward. Like, what are we doing? Let's produce this and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, the, the guy gets in a huge huff and gets angry and is like screaming at me and then uh, blocks me from being able to have any video uh, or at all and totally shuts me out. And I'm like, damn, I wish I never signed the release for the video because <laughs> I got nothing. So basically the gay guy came and used me and my wife for the better part of a month, well, a month of our lives when you consider going out there just to get unbelievable film they can use for whatever the hell they want which is a little scary, actually, because I hope they're not uh, using my likeness to try to gain things when I have no part of it. It's so stupid. It's just so stupid, like these people. And, you know, the high-end racing world is very much full of the disagreeable uh, personality types. It's cutthroat, backstabbing. It's just kind of crappy like that. And L.A., Hollywood, very much hugely is just so fake, just so nice fake not doing anything. It's just stupid. I don't think any of those people know how to actually build a team and go anywhere together. What I have found is in life, and this is a token of wisdom for any young people going somewhere, if you backstab, cutthroat, manipulate, and use people, you can go pretty far. But you will never be able to go as far as the people who have values, do what they say they're gonna do, back things up, treat people respectfully, like people. You're not just using people, you're trying to build a team and go somewhere. Those people will have a harder time getting to the top, but those are the people that can genuinely get there and stay there at the top, as long as they know how to watch their back so they don't get cut or stabbed in the back. I have just come to the finality with TV and film or acting or, or doing documentary, whatever, doing any of that sort of thing outside of YouTube and social media, I don't care anymore. Like, it's just a big hot mess of everybody trying to use you. They're wasting your time. They're being fake nice to you uh, the whole way through. And that's just it. And I just don't care anymore. Um, you know, my whole life people said, oh my God, you'd be amazing on camera and as an actor, blah, 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 maybe. Um, obviously I've been able to do well enough with regard to YouTube and being real and someone entertaining with cars and such and certainly it'd be fun to take that as an art with film. But I'm not gonna chase that. Like on a daily basis, I, I think to myself, God, it has got to suck to be an actor or actress or a person on TV and film. I mean, just suck, just the worst lifestyle in the world, which is a shame because, you know, the thought of doing film and creative art uh, that way would in fact be a lot of fun. That's about it, guys. I just wanted to make note of this. So if you get approached by TV or production companies or casting agents, yeah, it's flattering and that's cool. You might be doing something right or you look pretty or you build something cool or whatever. You got something going for you. Humor it enough that you're not wasting your time and money, but don't take much stock in it. Because the other truth of the matter is TV is dead. Film is basically dead. And where it's at is YouTube and social media. But sadly, Social media and YouTube is getting to the point where it's almost dead for the individual too because companies have figured out the algorithm and they can put a lot of money and a teamwork of people into studies and making things happen. I'll give you a perfect example. If you see a lot of these automotive, big automotive YouTubers that are now on Facebook with the, you know, the little short videos with the, the uh, captions over top of them so much, sometimes aren't translated that well, yeah, that's a company doing that. Um, it's not them. Uh, because they can make more money and they put a ton of money into it. So the organic nature of the internet is certainly dying, partially because the algorithms and the people that control those entities, whether it's like Meta or YouTube or whatever, they have their own agendas in the world. And creators that don't match up with those agendas are not gonna be able to have a voice whether the people of the world like it or not. I don't know what the next platform of art will be, um, but we'll see. But uh, certainly the old days of film and doing art for art's sake with film is a, is a grand thing and TV could be fun and acting, of course, comedy. Um, and there's been a lot of good times with regard to social media, letting talent rise. Um, but even that's changing. So, I don't know guys, I think TV's kind of dead. Um, so don't get too excited when they approach you. They mostly just waste your time. And uh, this is what I've learned over more than a decade. See you guys next time.